Okay, welcome back to Jimmy's Neighborhood Bees. I'm Jimmy, and I keep our bees in our regular neighborhood. So uh, I do things a little bit differently than some of the other beekeepers out there. So I just like to show you what I do and how I do it. We only have the two hives here currently. Uh, we're making um, preparations to have a resource nuke hive um, this, this coming season. Um, and also I'm building a long hive for my daughter's property in West Virginia where I will still tend those bees, but I'll go up uh, to my daughter and son-in-law to their house uh, once every two, three weeks uh, just to go up and check on the bees. And uh, I'll also have, um, I'll have some status discs that I got. Uh, let's see if I can find one which I don't have it handy right now, but I'll show it to you. But I got it from Bohemia Bees, uh, along with a, with a uh, collaboration with Castle Hives. And it's the Queen Wright Dials. And, um, boy, I'm terrible. You can tell I'm no Fred Dunn. I don't have everything handy right away. But anyway, I'm gonna put one of those Queen Wright Dials on her hive in West Virginia and I'll have a duplicate wheel just on my, um, I'll show it to you later, but on my shelf there so that uh, I can at a glance say, oh, this is the West Virginia Hive. The last time I looked at it, it that was the status. So it's like a repeater. Um, anyway, that's not what today's about. The other day you saw me put some of my extra excess wax in this crock pot. Okay, here's another installment of uh, just various things I do out here um this is some old comb as you can see old honeycomb that was needed to be redone i got it in my crock pot and i'm melting it down and um once it gets all melted i'll just let it sit and uh i'll filter it out and then i'll have wax to uh re-wax some frames i added some water to it and I melted it down and um, today I'm gonna do my first tailings and scrapings and whatever and then put some more water and try to do my second meltdown of this wax so I had uh, melted it down I used the low setting on here and I just plugged it in for some hours put water in it plugged it in for a few hours I stirred it up a little bit and a lot of that stuff was floating and I didn't know what, what to expect. Um, but what actually came out, let me get something here to pull it out, is a little chunk of wax here. So it's draining right now, but as you can see, it's a little thick. It's about an inch thick with junk in it and junk all on the back because some of this wax was from uh, where I had wax moth. I didn't store it properly over, over uh, once I took some old brood frames out and stuff. I didn't store them in my freezer. I kind of let them, let the bees eat, uh, open fed it. And then um, I wrapped it up, but apparently I got wax moth in there. But, so this wax will be, um, I'll be doing a second uh, thing. I'm going to take this outside and scrape the, all this, uh, whatever they call that stuff. I'm going to scrape all of that off, clean out my water out of here, dump it, and then um, I will, i put this down here, dump it, then I'll put some new water and restart my second melting i'm going to go ahead and take this outside i'm going to use use this scraper to scrape it off anyway so i'm going to move outside and uh, scrape this off and i'll bring you guys with me okay i hope you can hear me i got a neighbor across over there she's got a yard service that's uh blowing up her uh, leaves and they're using um you know backpack blowers and all that so i hope that sound isn't so annoying anyway 
I got the wax here. I got me a tub here I use. Everybody who knows me knows I love Lock and Lock. I, I watch QVC every Wednesday, eight o'clock in the kitchen with David. I'm multitasking because I'm also listening to the stream team on Wednesdays, usually around eight o'clock. So I'll have the TV on, I'll have my computer on, my earphone on one ear. My wife says I'm, I'm triply multitasking, but it's just my happy place. So, and then I'll see something nice and I'll order on QVC. I'll, I'll switch screens on the computer, log in, order something. So I love the Lock and Lock products. It's not sponsored. Uh, QVC doesn't know me except buy the things I buy. But anyway, so I'm gonna use this and store the scrapings. I'm gonna take my hive tool. I'm just gonna scrape off. Oh, this is so nasty. And this is the first, um, the first melting of this wax. For most people, this is not a lot of wax, but for me, it's pretty much, a, it's a lot because again, we only have two hives. We only have the two hives. And um, I try to keep as many as my frames as possible, especially frames that were built out. Uh, this doesn't, does not include any frames that I used uh, better comb with because I did use better comb and I still do. Um, and I don't treat that as beeswax. So I had one better comb uh, frame that was destroyed. I just took it apart, threw it away in the trash. I didn't put it in this wax. So I put fresh water, reheat it and reheat my wax again. That's a nice big chunk for what you saw the, uh, the comb that I put in there. But anyway, reheat it and let it go for a second round. And I'm gonna do that in the storage shed. Okay, I hope that wasn't too loud for everybody out there. Um, like I said, they're they're blowing, doing leaf cleanup. Uh, a lot of people wait until like uh, early spring. They let the leaves stay on the ground throughout the winter, and then they, they just clean it up in the in the uh, spring. So that's what my neighbor's doing. Anyway, I scraped off his, a lot of the tailings and the the, the slum go whatever they call that stuff, and uh, that's what I got left. And I went in the house and I got me some hot water. Oh, these bottles, they come from Homestead Creamery. I'm going to sound like a commercial today. But believe me, none of this is sponsored. It's just what I do and what I use. And I just share it. But Homestead Creamery in uh, Smith Mountain Lake, Virginia. For me, it's like a three-hour drive. But they also have their products in local stores. But during the, the eggnog season... If you're an eggnog drinker, they make the awesome eggnog. But I get the custard. They do liquid custard. It's almost like drinking, you know, like you buy frozen custard, like an ice cream, whatever. But they have it liquid, custard. Oh, my God. I buy this stuff like like, like it's going out of business. One day, the, the stores here... Locally, it's sold by Kroger and a few other stores, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So I called them up that morning, and they said that, yeah, we got them on the shelf. So I took a three-hour drive one way to go buy six bottles of their custard. No, I bought four bottles of custard, two bottles of the eggnog. Anyway, and uh, so I just took a drive. For those of you who know I, I drive minis, it's a fun drive because it's a Mini Cooper S. You know, so, but anyway, so I just hopped in one of the minis and, and took a nice country drive, two lane roads, Virginia mountains, that kind of thing, back roads all the way. It was a beautiful drive, but it was worth it to go get the custard. Um, anyway, that's it for that commercial, non-paid, non-sponsored, but 
and I'm not supposed to drink a lot of it, but boy, is it good. Anyway, so if you're ever in the, in the area, uh, uh, Smith Mountain Lake is it's, it's near Roanoke or closer to Roanoke on Interstate 81 if you're passing through during that season. But they also sell regular milk, chocolate milk, strawberry milk, all that stuff, um, heavy whipping cream, the works. Uh, cheese, butter, you know. Anyway, you get it. You know what a creamery is. But anyway, um, so I, I went and got some hot water, and I'm going to uh, remelt, do my second melting. So I'm debating, yeah, I might as well. I'm going to break it up. People got all of these different fancy ways of doing stuff. I don't. I bought this crock pot. And this is definitely not going to be a commercial. Because I got this one at a Goodwill. Um, it was like $6. And, uh, plugging it in there. I got a little plug there. But it was a, uh, it was like six, six bucks for, for this crock pot. And uh, the lady, she was looking at me like, you're buying a used crock pot? And I'm like, it's for wax. It's, it's not, it's not for human consumption. So, you don't have to feel you got to go on. <laughs> you don't have to feel. My chin fell off. So. You don't have to feel you got to go and buy a brand new crock pot that you're going to ruin. Or worse yet, don't use your crock pot that you use in your kitchen at home if you really use it. Because uh, that might not be a good thing when the regular user uh, goes to use it. So this is not one for, for that. It's just a storeroom. Anyway, so that's it for that. I'll let you see what it looks like on the second and third uh, subsequent um, meltings and uh, uh, show you what the hunk of wax I get afterwards. I have these silicone molds um, in the storeroom in the uh, house there that I bought. Some of them are octagon shaped, like a, and they, I think they got a B on them. Um, so if I ever wanted to make little little ingots of wax or whatever, that's the only reason I got them. And uh, I bought one, and then uh, somebody bought me one as a gift. Uh, I think I have, I don't even know what the other one, the shape is. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm going to go and do some stuff to the minis. And I'll get back with you B people when you can, uh, for the next go round. Okay, not bad. Uh, I've been letting this wax melt and um, again I've got a lot of that slummy stuff up to the top I stir it down every now and then um, and I'm going to go ahead and unplug my crock pot and I'm gonna let it uh, cool overnight let it cool overnight and uh, then tomorrow, I'll take a look at it and, again, scrape it off, do all that stuff that I'm supposed to do. Um, yeah. So, in the meantime, while I was doing that, I've been working on one of our Mini Coopers, um, doing some work there. So, if you want to check that out, you can go to Jimmy's First Gen Mini Rescue. Um I just do maintenance on, on the cars that I've got. We, we had bought one brand new back in 2004, first generation, which is first gen. And um, then I started, I got caught up buying cars from Copart, not sponsored. It's an auto auction place that they'll do donated cars, wrecked cars, whatever. And I was buying a car, I thought, for parts, but it was beautiful. So I decided to fix it. And, and I, it snowballed. We ended up getting two convertibles and, and the other hardtop. So now we have the four that I maintain. I also do work on our Subaru Forester 
um, and we have a boat that I do some work and I'm doing some upgrades uh, so I can put it back in, this, in, the, uh, in the water for the season. So yeah, if you want to check those out, please check them out. Um, tell me what you think. And if you got any, any suggestions, whether it be B suggestions or uh, Mini Cooper suggestions or, or, or maintenance stuff, let me know. Um, you know, if I've done something in the past and maybe I didn't video it, I can still explain it. Or if you got a question on how I'm doing something with the bees or why I'm doing something a certain way. Um, you know, anyway, so that's it for now. I'm just gonna unplug this. No big deal, we'll let it sit. Uh, this is only my second time rendering wax uh, in the three years that I've been beekeeping. Um, because of course, when you first start out, you don't, you don't have many drawn frames and all of that stuff. And uh, I did get a, um, a used medium super from someone. And that was some of the wax that I melted down because I didn't want to use it. Um, but he was getting out of beekeeping and he had a medium with honey. So we spun out the honey and I just took the frames. He was going to throw them away. Uh, but I decided not to use them uh, because they weren't from my bees. So I uh, melted that wax down and that was the first time I ever melted wax, which was kind of cool, funny, different. And so now this is the second time. And uh, like I said, I'm going to stir this up and, uh, and then I'll just... Um, yeah, hopefully this stuff will sink to the bottom. And uh, let me put the rest of this, well, now nah, I don't need the rest of the water. But hopefully the stuff will sink to the bottom. And, uh, oh, that would have been terrible. Almost, I almost spilled it, almost knocked it over. But uh, anyway, stuff will sink to the bottom. And, uh, and then I'll be able to um, scrape it off again and maybe do it a third time and see what happens. But anyway, so that's it for now. We'll turn this off. And uh, where's the lid? Oh, here we go. We'll cover it up. I'll let it go about five minutes more while I'm cleaning up shop. And then I'll unplug it and turn it off before I leave. Anyway. That's it for now. This is temporary, or or this is uh, I'm gonna it's gonna keep going, and I'll get back with you for you for you guys when you see it. It'll just say okay, I did this. The next day did this. The next day did this. So, but you'll see it seamlessly. For me, it'll be three, four, five days. Who knows? Could be a week. I don't know. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and uh, I appreciate honestly everybody who who subscribes. Everybody who watches, comments, I don't ask for them, but uh, they are appreciated, and thank you very much. All right, bye. Okay. Day two for me um, with this uh, wax rendering. This was the second rendering, so I'm going to scrape this stuff off like I did yesterday. And um, I'm going to keep on doing this. I might... Uh, I might filter this wax the next time the next time I, I uh, melt it down. I might filter it through a screen, like a, um, just a little wire a little wire mesh screen that I have, and uh, and pour it into something, let it cool again, and that way I won't have as many scrapings to go through. Um, so like I said, this is number two. And it's getting better, but... Yeah. Anyway, that's number two. It's getting better. Still about uh, three quarters of an inch, maybe. Eh, thick. But the next time I melt it down... Oh, and I'll pour this water in the compost pile again. But the next time I, I do melt it down... I'm going to uh, send it through a strainer. See what it looks like tomorrow. Okay.
this is day three of my wax melt and I think I'm gonna be done with this after I show you everything that's going on uh, yesterday I kind of poured it through this old uh, house screen that I got so I, I captured some of that a lot of that big gunk that was in there and uh, this is my bucket lock and lock bucket that I use to keep my wax in um, when I just break it off comb that I don't need or whatever. So this bucket is strictly just for wax. But um, I was, I've got a little bit of um, stuff to clean off the bottom here. Not as much as before. I got about a, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch of wax here. And it's, it's getting even clearer, cleaner. So I may do one more melting um, and then I'm just going to, after I do the one more melting, I'm just going to show you the final, uh, wax, whatever. So, um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and take my, um, hive tool, scrape it, dump the old water, put some new water and, uh, yeah, and do that. Now I wanted to point this out on my board here. I have the honeybee festival um, June 24th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Our bee club, the Rockwood Park Beekeepers Association uh, in Chesterfield, Virginia, every year they put on a honeybee festival during pollinator week. Um, last year uh, was the first one since the lockdowns of COVID. And uh, they had, I guess, nine previous ones, but last year was the largest. We had uh, almost 5,000 people come through our little area where we uh, we have vendors set up. We have uh, food trucks and food carts and all of these things. All the uh, activities are free as far as, you know, uh, learning about bees, learning about beekeepers. There's honey tastings. There's uh, demonstrations on hives there's demonstrations on uh spinning honey out with a centrifuge um there's all kinds of things we we had a uh we had a drone petting zoo where a few beekeepers got a few drones out of their hives and brought them you, you do it that morning and then you bring the, the drones because they won't last all the time you know and for those who don't know drones are male bees and they don't have stingers so when you put a male bee or a little bee and you let some kid hold it, it it's you may be making a beekeeper, a future beekeeper. So anyway, if you're in the central Virginia, Richmond, Chesterfield area, we're Chesterfield, Virginia, the, the, the and I'll, I'll talk about this more later, but it's June 24th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Again, it's free. It's the Honey Bee Festival and it's at Rockwood Park which is a Chesterfield County Park. This year, we used to have one small area where the Science Center is, and we also have an observation hive in the Science Center, so you can actually see a beehive, a working beehive. But uh, anyway, this year, they've allowed us to even expand further from just our one parking lot because it was so popular and so big last year. Uh, we had local um, a local greenhouse, that donated a bunch of plants and, and, and every family group can take one plant for free. Uh, usually it was a pollinator friendly plant. Um, so there's a lot of activities, you know, kids face painting, the whole works. Um, last year celebrated the 400th anniversary of the honeybee coming to America. Um, so they came right here to Virginia to Jamestown 400 years ago. Now, I'm wearing my shirt today. That's what this shirt says. But I got my wife's shirt because I wanted you to see it. The front says, I wanted to show it really good. The front says 400 years of bees in America. I had to read it. <laughs> but the back, and these were our volunteer shirts from last year. So I'm sure we'll have new shirts this year. Uh, because what my wife and I both volunteer. So there it is. The Rockwood Park Backyard Beekeepers Association. And it's the Honey Bee Festival. So 
again come by if you if you're in the area you know or or even if you're in another part of virginia whatever it's worth it's worth a, a quick trip it's, it's it's fun anyway i'm gonna go and do these scrapings I'll, I'll bring you out there so you can see it and uh we'll be right back Maybe I'll just do one more, one more melting. I'm gonna break this up. I don't wanna melt it. So that's it. Next time you see it, it'll just be the final product. Because, uh, yeah. That's gonna be good enough for what I need it for. Okay, I poured my wax into this mold. Um, I actually have one more that I did first and I redid it. So um, I have three of these full ones and one little partial that I'm just gonna keep in my uh, crock pot, melt it down next time. But I'll show you the two when I take them out in the house. Okay, okay. okay. Show a final showing of what my wax turned into. Um, that was the mold I used. It's a silicone mold. And I got three full, I don't know, I guess it's about three quarters of an inch pieces of chunk of wax. Came out very clean. And uh, yeah, very nice. And then this is my silicone mold. All right. Thank you all for watching. Sticking with this wax melting thing. I think I'll do more of this a little bit later. All right. Y'all keep it. Stay tuned and have fun with your bees.